Just when you thought CTV News couldn't go any lower, you find yourself holding their beer. We'll get to how Canada's second most hated news network is riding the anti-Semitism train to the top ratings, but first, we have other matters to attend to, such as one of the real reasons housing in Canada is so ridiculously priced. You don't want to miss that, as this will have a greater impact than any Bank of Canada interest rate cuts. Two of our favorite topics in these here parts, censorship and mass immigration, got into a very dirty collision this week. A former Tim Hortons employee who's been working at the restaurant for four years was fired after she more or less blew the whistle. Pretty much immediately after she was fired, she created a TikTok account so that she could tell her side of the story. Now, telling her side of the story is made a little more difficult when the TikTok account she created now looks like this. Thankfully, the internet is forever and we still have remnants of what she posted. The music you're going to hear for this video was attached by myself because I'm not entirely sure if the original music she used was copyrighted. I can only presume that 3G Capital, the hedge fund that owns Tim Hortons, as well as Burger King, Popeye's Chicken, and Firehouse Subs, is likely behind the deletion of her TikTok account. And I can understand why though. 3G Capital's model of slashing operating costs to their absolute lowest have been very clearly felt. Here's a quick roundup of some of the more recent examples of these cost cuts. recalling its brain soup based on some parts of Canada and you won't believe why. The soup base was recalled in Ontario and Alberta due to an insect contamination and the soup has been sold up to October 20th in those specific provinces. And of course with this discovery, the Canadian Food Inspection Agency says the soup shouldn't be served or sold for the public safety. All this to say, if you're fed up with mass immigration, you might want to consider cutting Tim Hortons and other big chains out of your routine. Now, here's a story you won't hear nearly as much about as you should, which is unfortunate given that it affects 
tens of millions of Canadians. I'm talking about a probe launched by Canada's competition bureaus into the activities of CREA, otherwise known as the Canadian Real Estate Association. The Bureau said its investigation is looking into whether CREA's rules discourage buyers' realtors from offering lower commission rates or whether they affect competition in other ways. Folks, I know I haven't spoken about this before, but I am in the real estate business. And the only reason I don't talk about it more is because I'm in the midst of a massive business model change myself, and that'll see me selling real estate very differently than all the other conventional agents out there. The very reason behind the Competition Bureau's probe is pretty much the same reason behind my decision to make the switch. Real estate here in the West is a Ponzi scheme. I'll go more in depth on why in future videos, but for now, let's just say that those big ass commissions being paid out to realtors do contribute in part to the bloated prices of housing. Not entirely, mind you, but they certainly don't help. And that's why I welcome this pro by the Competition Bureau, and I sincerely hope it causes the real estate industry harm. If you live in Ontario and you're thinking of selling, stay close to this channel, as the business model change I mentioned I'm undergoing right now could save you as much as 50000 maybe even more, on the sale of your home once it launches. So now you have even more reason to subscribe. Finally, this brings us to CTV, who only just saved their skins after broadcasting doctored footage of Pierre Polyev. In my opinion though, the incident you're about to see is a lot worse than that. On October 7th, 2023, Hamas militants charged into Israel to carry out an unprovoked attack. 1,205 innocent people died that day. Many of those victims were children. Some of the female victims were violated. When the attacks were done, Hamas paraded its hostages, as well as the bodies of some of its victims, in the streets of Gaza. Tens of thousands of Palestinians poured out into the streets and welcomed those terrorists home and cheered and applauded for them when they saw what they had done. They couldn't be happier or more excited to learn that over 1,200 people had just been murdered. And now, on the anniversary of that unprovoked massacre, CTV is commemorating that random act of mass violence by profiling how those events of that day impacted Palestinians. I'll leave off by calling this for what it obviously is. Disgusting. With you being a viewer of this channel, I trust you can come to your own conclusions, and perhaps they're very similar to mine. What I'll never get is how the very Canadians who condemned Donald Trump for what he said about Mexicans back in 2016 are the very same people celebrating Hamas attacks and attacking Jews with every slur in the book. I truly am appalled at Canada. I truly am appalled at the world at large for the way they've handled this entire situation. I thank you very much for watching. Please consider subscribing.